Hello everybody, Stuart Matola here and I help men get what they want in relationship and a lot of times that means I'm talking to the women as well. Talking today about sex and coronavirus times, the couples that are getting it and the couples that are not. And I want to start out with this quote and I might mention it a few times during this Facebook Live. This will be rebroadcast on YouTube. If you like it, click the red subscribe button to the right or like my Facebook page. So, uh, we'll be talking about intimacy, risk, and desire, and particularly how those things are brought up to a much higher stakes game now in this coronavirus time when people are locked up, or as we say, uh, sheltered in place. So, couples are spending a lot of time together right now, really challenging for them. So, check out this quote by... Tony Robbins. Uh, I'm curious what you think of it. Passion in a relationship is commensurate with the amount of uncertainty you can tolerate. Again, I'm going to say that. Passion in a relationship is commensurate with the amount of uncertainty you can tolerate. So what I'll be speaking to a bunch today is we typically think um, of intimacy as safety and intimacy as that place where I can trust you with everything, etc. And then when do we fall into monotony, predictability, apathy, and just checking out from one another all together, okay? And uh, I have this awesome book behind me by Esther Perel, Mating in Captivity, which that Tony Robbins uh, quote is in. And I love the way she challenges the idea. We tend to think generally, well, the uh, health of the sexual relationship for a married couple. And please note, a lot of what I'll be talking about is committed long-term relationships today, married couples. And there will be pointers for people who are single who are one day aspiring to uh, be in a long-term relationship. So there are things that they can definitely get out of this as well. And um, when does intimacy become monotony, tedium, like there's nothing there. You just become like wallpaper to one another. Um, real quick, if the mic is over loud, over excessive, please let me know. I do see my levels going pretty high right now. I'm going to see real quick if I can uh, change those levels. But yeah, at what level does do we stop seeing each other in a relationship? And we seem to accept as a culture levels down. We seem to accept as a culture that, oh, that's just something that happens. Yeah, we eventually become wallpaper to each other. The spark can't be there forever. And then on the flip side is the opposite expectation that we're always going to be pumped and excited and, you know, fucking all the time and having the best sex. Well, where do we find it in the middle? Okay. Um, where there is trust and safety and there's love, desire and sex. So I'll be talking a lot about that again. I'm going to mention this quote again by Tony Robbins. Passion in a relationship is commensurate with the amount of uncertainty you can tolerate. And that's a huge part of Perel's work in mating in captivity. That it's actually the uncertainty in a relationship that creates the, the, the desire, the spark, the flame, the excitement. And so what does that really mean? Does that mean uncertainty like... I don't know if he's going to be there for me or uncertainty like I don't know if he's out there seeking other women or on the opposite side. I don't know if she's there for me or if she's going to be out there seeking other women. Well, last week I spoke a lot about teamwork and how um, during these coronavirus times, couples that were working as a team, communicating, helping with the kids together, really connecting to make this a, a time in which they could succeed through structures or through um, just ways of scheduling their days that they were more likely to be having sex to connecting. But the reality, and I'm going to challenge that somewhat today, the reality is they may very well be so exhausted at the end of the day that they have nothing left for each other. So what I love about the idea of uncertainty actually being a good thing for a relationship goes against a lot of the wisdom out there what kind of uncertainty? Um, and often in couples, we hide the uncertainty from one another. I mean, how often are we afraid of speaking about something that we fear is going to cause hurt 
or cause the partner to question how much I'm there? What if you were to say to your partner, um, flat out, hey, uh, damn, I've been watching some pornography lately and um, I feel shitty about it and I don't want to be doing that. And you felt safe enough in your relationship to know that you could speak that truth and actually have a conversation with your partner um, and feel the trust and confidence in yourself to not feel like she's just or he is just going to blow up on you. And your ability to navigate that type of uncertainty, get over the bridge to the other side, that's really, really sexy. And that's something that um, I've been experiencing in my relationship, um, which has made really enhanced desire. Now, for a lot of couples, especially who've been married for many years, oh, desire, whatever, you know, they've shut that part of themselves down and they've assumed that just functioning together, um, you know, having that plateau of status quo, yeah, that's probably about all we're going to get. Um, and yet, I see time and time again that those couples are, over time, just flatlining. And so I think there's no doubt that we all crave a sense of spark, a sense of eros. Eros is often spoken to as uh, mystery, curiosity. How am I curious about you? Okay, because I've lived with you for 15 years. Is there still anything I don't know about you? Well, if you don't share those little secrets inside that you're scared to share because you're afraid I'm going to judge you or you think, you know, I'm. we have a track record where I react a certain way, we need to break that chain of reaction and start creating new patterns. They always say neurons that fire together, wire together. And that's true in any area of our lives. So if, as couples, we learn to have harder conversations about things that we may be struggling with in the relationship, we are much more likely to experience or, or, or be truthful about the uncertainty we experience. Because most of the time, the uncertainty that is experienced is kept in this like tight box, you know, uh, in a shadow, and it can grow like mold and it's not let out that's my secret and there's no way i'm gonna tell her about that because i might lose her <gasps> i might lose her or i might lose him <gasps> oh no what's gonna happen i'll be lonely i'll be alone for the rest of my life no please don't leave me well that's what's often going on inside of people's heads and if i'm in relationship and i've lived this too hell yeah i have and if I live in the context of, I'm afraid of losing you, so I'm not going to speak to you about things I'm uncertain about, such as we haven't had sex for two months. What the F is going on here? If I'm afraid to approach those things, um, our relationship cannot tolerate any uncertainty. That keeps us both small, more likely to flatline, Sex is dead. And sex is an indicator of desire, spark, energy, current. Okay? So I'm going to say it again. I'm gonna, probably going to repeat this quote like five times on this Facebook Live. Passion is in a relationship is commit, commensurate with the amount of uncertainty you can tolerate. Tony Robbins. Passion in a relationship is commensurate with the amount of uncertainty you can tolerate. But most people cannot tolerate any uncertainty in their marriage or their long-term relationship, which is precisely why they hold secrets from one another. And I actually wrote a blog about this called The Unlived Life of the Couple. When you become invisible to one another. And that's like the death trap of marriage or long-term relationship. Okay. Now, a lot of times we don't realize is we do have a key to open that door so we are no longer invisible. And it's simply said, speaking hard truths lovingly, okay? That means we sit down in a space. We say, hey, we're going to talk 20 minutes here. I got this pen, this whatever, this just something that says the talking stick that ah, it's my turn to talk. You're not allowed to talk. You can't 
say anything. You can't refute me. You can't tell me I'm full of BS. Your job is just to listen. Okay. It's so powerful to have that when you've been in a bickering kind of space with your partner. I just want you to hear me. I just want to know I'm heard. I know that I want to let some things I've been holding in a box for so long, such as are we going to make it and I'm scared that we won't. And I want to speak that to you, not to hurt you, but to get closer to you. Then you take three or four minutes, you reflect back what you heard me. No arguing. Again, I heard you say this. I heard you say this. Maybe you add, it made me feel. That's it. Switch. Now it's the other person's chance to speak a hard truth lovingly. And the biggest thing is you don't say you did this or you make me feel or you blah, blah, blah. It's I feel. I statements. This is Psych 101. So what I'm going to say is about the couples that are having more sex during this quarantine versus those who are not. Okay. What I've seen is those couples that are having sex are getting closer, are using this as a time of adventure and reinvention. What do you know? The kids are in the park from uh, one to two. Let's go have some fun. We can never do this in normal times. Of course, there's got to be an emotional bank account that's built up prior to that. It's not just like, oh, let's click into that. But again, the passion in a relationship is commensurate with the amount of uncertainty you can tolerate. Okay. Now, another big thing I've seen out there is, um, and I want real quick, if, if any, what does that quote mean to you? Does that resonate with you? Passion in a relationship is commensurate with the amount of uncertainty you can tolerate. I said it real fast there because I've said it like six or seven times now. Does that resonate with you? Does it feel hard or counterintuitive? I'd love to hear from people out there what you're feeling, what you're thinking about this. Um... Again, this will be rebroadcast on YouTube. Please click the subscribe button to the lower right. And on Facebook Live, please like this video and share. So again, a couple that's tolerating uncertainty versus burying uncertainty. And most couples bury uncertainty because we think marriage and long-term relationship, that the ultimate goal of it is safety. And there has to be a level of safety and there has to be a level of risk, okay? I believe the true energy level and vitality level of a couple is how much risk they can tolerate, how much uncertainty they can acknowledge in life, not just in their relationship, in life. Do I live as a partner clinging to the job I hate? Because I'm afraid of risk and uncertainty and change. What kind of energy are you going to bring home to your marriage or your relationship when you live like that? So ultimately, any relationship is a sum total of the way that two, pe two partners live. Do they live with a tolerance for uncertainty and risk? Well, that's where Eros is born. That's where mystery is born. That's where passion is born. And again, there's many couples who are going to just say, I'm older, I just want safety, I just want to chill out and watch my Netflix, and we have dinner together, the kids are doing what they need to do, that's fine for me. But it ain't, let's face it people, it ain't. Going through that kind of monotony day after day, you may not be acknowledging it, but... That's tedium. We weren't born in this life to live through monotonous safety. Okay. And what's really challenging about this time of quarantine is for those couples that prioritize safety over risk. Um, this is this, this is diving really deep into fear. 
because these are really uncertain times. So I want to challenge those couples to start to break out of that box of safety and start to understand that you can protect yourself, you can be cautious about whether, about how you go out into the world, but nobody, nobody can ever protect themselves from the big end. And the big end might be the big end of life, or it might be the big end of a marriage, or it might be the big end of a long-term relationship, job, or whatever it is. And there's something phenomenally invigorating about approaching that energy. You get to assess how important it is to you. You get to assess if you're really happy in that relationship or even in this life. Yes, obviously many people are making those decisions on a daily level whether they want to be in this life, okay? whether you want to be in this marriage or long-term relationship, look that in the eye and you get energy. And there's the side of the fear and the terror of the end and what will I be? And there's the invigoration of the truth of what I want to be. And when two partners in a relationship come together to honor what they want and speak that in a way that's responsible, mature, and loving. Spark goes up, desire goes up, sex goes up. Bam. I've watched too many couples, and I was one of them for a while. I was married for close to 20 years. Just go along with this safe plateau. Okay. Now, we often say sex is a barometer of the health of the relationship. Well, what I want to say is I actually think it's a barometer of desire in the relationship. There's plenty of relationships that are quote unquote healthy. They get along. They're like amazing roommates. Um, and that's enough. And that, that works for them. And God bless. That's fine. But for most of us, that's not enough. Okay. So it's not just, oh, we have a great relationship. We have good intimacy. Um, you know, emotionally, verbally, but we're not having any sex, okay? So, again, mating in captivity by Esther Perel here. Huge piece where she just basically says, I don't think uh, sex is the barometer of the health of the relationship. They're almost two parallel threads, but not one thread. There's the relationship, the trust, the safety, and then there's the sex, the excitement, the spark. Um, okay, so somebody asked here, can you give an example of stepping out of safety? I did prior in the uh, Facebook Live, but I'll say it again. Um, I have this desire. Let's say I'm, I'm an individual who's been married for a while, and I have this desire um, to have another experience. I mean, that's about as stepping out of safety as possible. And I, I actually even want to take a lower risk proposition, which might be, um, I want to speak to my partner about how I haven't been happy with our sex life. And that might be an example of stepping out of safety. Um, so how do I say that to my partner in a way where, um, especially for us guys, a lot of times we're going to get something back of like that's all you think about and all you want is sex and if i'm not s sleeping with you then you're not happy and it's like okay i can feel those darts i can have a i can you know react or i can say hmm yeah honey that that sounds that's how you really feel huh um let's talk about that because that's not what I'm saying I'm saying I want to be closer to you I love you I want to be with you I want to have sex with you you're desirable to me um, that's what I'm saying I'm not saying I want it all the time and maybe that starts with just us prioritizing each other we're both so busy all the time we're working we're dealing with the kids um, how about we just 
would you be open to just taking some time to connect even without sex just to talk and connect and um, maybe even a little bit of touch and try that a few nights a week and yeah I do want sex and yeah when we do touch I probably will want to have sex with you okay but I also want to honor your pace because I want you to be in the bedroom with me when I'm there with you and I don't want you to just have your legs open feeling like you have to tolerate it that is such not a turn on to me so what I want to know is what's going to turn you on. Okay, what am I not doing right now that could turn you on? So there's an example of, you know, stepping out of safety. And obviously it takes some self-awareness and will it commitment to not react, but instead to respond. Um, another peace about desire versus um desire and sex versus safety okay i love just think about it the, the whole idea that fire needs air okay so the way i want to extrapolate that over to relationship is as partners you need a sense of individuation and yes individuation is in this quarantine times might mean like, hey, I'm going out for two hours on a bike ride or, you know, I'm going to take some self-care time. I'm going to take some space. So how does self-care make the relationship better so that the relationship has air to fuel the fire? Well, if a couple's in the house all day, there's not much air. Ain't going to be much fire. Okay. So I want those of you out there who are in a long-term relationship to think about self-care. What do you need for yourself? Are you trying to please your kids and your boss all day if you're working remotely? Are you stressed out all day about looking for the job? What air can you give yourself? Okay? In terms of, I know it's hard now, especially those of you in the cities, but getting out for a short, simple walk I have a friend who wanted to literally hop on a plane to get out of his uh, family system to go visit his 83-year-old mother because um, she happened to live in a place that was warm weather. And I was like, no, oh, no, not a good idea. Not a good idea. Like, find a way to incorporate some self-care, some air, some well-being for yourself away from your family imagine as a couple you both did that for two hours a day one or two days a week maybe even three days maybe you're not working that much or maybe even find a way to get out together for one or two hours so again the couples that are really thriving in this quarantine time are the ones that are reinventing tossing away the old box and understanding, yes, there's a lot of uncertainty in this time, and we're going to get through this together, and we're going to come out stronger. We're not going to spend all day stressing about how we make money or how we do this or how this happens or when things are going to reopen. Maybe we'll spend a half hour stressing about it during the day, but not the entire day. Um, and so really what this all comes down to is the biggest thing I teach, which is sovereignty autonomy, individuality, and I call sovereignty being in integrity and alignment with your authentic desires, needs, and identity. And for most of us, this is a tall order. We're just functioning in life. Oh, my identity, my wants, my needs. Oh, that feels selfish. You know, I'm not going to do that. I, I, you know, well, you become a lot less sexy when you don't do that. Um... Other ways of touch. I spoke before about any 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 comments or feedback out there of anybody listening. Um, I do want to say I did get a few questions before this, before I went live. And um, I had heard from Jane of Dallas, Texas. And she said, my husband wishes I was a fucking machine. Um, pretty straight to the point. Pretty direct, uh, straight up Texan talk. And, um, you know, in the email exchange, I had asked her, well, you know, what do you want out of the relationship? Because that's what I teach. I teach helping people get what they want in relationship. Because I believe if you get what you want, 
and your partner gets what they want, win-win, okay? And I know for a lot of us, like for Jane, if you're listening out there, he wants me to be a fucking machine and obviously the wants are not connected. So I asked her um, and she wrote back and said she wants to just experience presence with him, just like lovingness. Um, so I said to her, what's the risk of speaking that to your husband? Um, and she said, she just, he'd just look at me like I'm crazy presence, lovingness. We have that. I'm here. I'm, I'm here. I'm in the house all the time. I'm a... And then she said that the um, opportunity to explain to him the difference of physical presence versus emotional and verbal presence, uh, he's never going to get that. Well, Jane, I'm going to tell you this. Um, you're already thrown in the towel. So if you're not going to fight for your marriage, then, you know, get out. Honestly, stop pissing away your days. And that's easier said than done. And I don't say that lightly. I know uh, through divorce, there's a lot of financial and uh, assets and tied in. It's a huge decision. And um, But if you're not going to step to the plate in your relationship to ask for what you want, because once you explain to him about what presence means, I want to have conversations with you when you're not on the phone. I want to be able to sit for... 10 minutes at the kitchen table, have tea and really have a powerful conversation or so, or at least a connected conversation. You know, what if you said to him, you want me to be a fucking machine? I'll show you how I'll be a fucking machine. Okay. And as she talks to her husband over time, she's going to find he does not want her to be a fucking machine. He wants her to be a physically loving, engaging wife, which often can mean just touch. And this is another thing we could go down the rabbit hole on is sex versus oral sex versus sexual touch versus creativity because sex is about much more than just intercourse. Um, there's all different levels of connection that can happen in a sexual exchange i'm uh hitting about close to 30 minutes here if there are any questions out there please let me know otherwise i'm going to jump into another email that i had gotten prior to the uh, facebook live um let's see here i got two i got tom from vancouver rico from queens let's see which one seems more spicy Again, if you like this video, it'll be broadcast, rebroadcast on YouTube. Click the lower right subscribe button. And for you on Facebook, uh, Facebook, of course, just please like this page. More information about me, stuartmatola.com. And actually what I do want to do is jump into uh, some concepts from a book I wrote called Fixing You Is Killing Me. And this speaks again to uh, sovereignty, individuality, and uncertainty in a relationship. And uh, going back to the quote I started with that Tony Robbins had said, passion in a relationship is commensurate with the amount of uncertainty you can tolerate. Passion in a relationship is commensurate with the amount of uncertainty you can tolerate. Okay, The exact opposite of what we think of as marriage, um, etc. Jerion... And a little man says, what not understand? You'll have to uh, clarify yourself, Jerion. Maybe English isn't your first language, but I'd be glad to hear from you. But uncertainty is something we can tolerate when we're mature adults who practice self-care, who are in relationship with ourselves, okay, and who practice sovereignty, which means I don't seek all my needs and all my love and everything I need from you. You don't complete me. Actually, my goal is that you make me bigger as a partner. So some of the values of in sovereign relationship, and you can kind of, yeah, you can see a list here on this side. I'm on the wrong side. And so I'm going to read from that. And this is on my website. You get the first chapter free, Fixing You is Killing Me, a conscious roadmap to knowing when to save and when to leave your relationship. But this, to me, is super sexy. 
We understand that a healthy self relationship is necessary to be in healthy partnership. We are emotionally responsible with one another, but not for one another. We have other important relationships and don't put everything on one another. We commit to take time apart, especially in this time of quarantine, and together, which means we don't just check out from one another, to replenish the source of our desire. We have communication and congruency with our life desires and relational goals. Okay? If you feel like you're living alone in your life and you just have your own agenda, you're not really married. You're not really in a relationship. You're just on cruise control. Anyway... We're at the half hour mark, approaching 31 minutes. I appreciate you being here. Again, this will be rebroadcast on YouTube. Please subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel on the lower right, the red button. And feel free to share this broadcast with other friends. And go to my website at stuartmotola.com and you will get a free, uh, the first chapter of Fixing You Is Killing Me for free. And you will also get access to this broadcast um, sent to you in your inbox as far as other kick-ass tips on how to get what you want in relationships. So thanks so much for being here. Every Friday, Facebook Live, 9 a.m., I will be broadcasting. So thanks so much and have a kick-ass, sexy, sovereign day. Ciao.